Can you help me write a query that will return the count of the number of rows in each table and my schema? And my answer to that question is very simple. It's like, uh, no. <laughs> Can you help me write a query that will return the count of the number of rows in each table and my schema? And my answer to that question is very simple. It's like, uh, no, I'd rather not. Now, why? Let's do a demo to explain why I would rather not ever have to do that. So I'm connecting to Scott here, the nice simple, because if I connect as my own user, there's thousands of tables in there from various demos over the years. So I've connected to Scott, which just has a few tables. I've thrown a few more in just for good measure. So if we look, if you want to see how many rows are in each table, this is the query you should run. Select table name, num rows from user tables. I get the table name, I get the number of rows. Why do people not want to use this? It's because they say, well, num rows only comes from when I did DBMath's gather table stats. Gather stats is an estimate. It's not accurate. It could be out of date. Even if it's done right now, it not might be accurate because of the size of the table. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to do this. I want an exact count. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's, let, let's assume that was a valid request. Let's see how we would end up doing an exact count. This is probably how a lot of us used to do it. You would simply use SQL to write SQL to write a script. So I would spool to select temp all count, and then I would build a select statement that runs select statements. So it will actually generate the following, select the table name followed by count start from the table, and then I would run that and it would simply spool it out and off we go. This is the old style way of doing it. Still totally valid, still something I wouldn't recommend you ever do, but if you want to, you could easily run a little command like that and that'll work yeah, very simply. However, we can do a little bit better than that. In most versions of Oracle, recent versions of Oracle, you can actually have PL SQL functions defined on the fly in a with statement for a single SQL statement. So I can write a little function called table count. It takes in a table name. It does execute immediate select count star from the table and returns that value. And now I can use that function inside a query. So I give it a run, and there we go. Now I get the exact row count for each table in my schema with a single query. As you can imagine, I got a table called Big Tab here. If I had a lot of big tables, that's gonna run for a long, long time because I have to scan every single table or at worst, every single primary key of the table. Now that you had the ability to do SQL within SQL using these with functions, you can, for example, do some optimizations like, okay, only sample 20% of the blocks, and therefore, when I find that count, return it by five to bring me up to an approximation of 100% of the blocks. That will run a lot faster. As you can see, we start getting some interesting anomalies for small tables because block sampling is never accurate. And we've sort of ended up back where, why wouldn't you just select num rows again? If you're gonna go with an approximation for performance reasons, well, just go with num rows. There's three examples, including one where you can get the exact count. Let's go back to the slides. Here's my advice. Just don't do it. I can't think of a reason why you would ever need to. The moment you get an exact count of rows in any table in your schema, that result's out of date, unless it's a 100% read-only schema. If it's a 100% read-only schema, there's no transactions going on, just gather stats once and now your num rows is exact. You never have to do it. I can't think of any, any information that's of value coming out of it. If my table has a million rows, what does that tell me about the table? Does it mean I should petition it? Maybe, maybe not. Does it have 20 rows? Does that mean I can drop it? Maybe, maybe not. If it has zero rows, does it, mad, does it mean I can drop it? Maybe, maybe not. I can't think of a single useful piece of information that you can glean from the count of a number of rows in a table. Yeah, just don't, just don't run these queries. That, that's the easiest way. Just don't run it unless you can genuinely think of a reason why you might need it and then ask yourself very seriously, can that information that I so desperately need be answered just by looking at num rows? Because I'd be willing to bet it is. Why did I want to you know, slam this question down? Because it's hugely popular. Go on Stack Overflow. This thing, 517 upvotes. 500 people said, this is an awesome question. And 430,000 people came along and said, yeah, I, I need to know this. They, you know, they've Googled in some way and come up by this. And you know, how do you find the row count for all tables in Postgres? 
Now, before you jump on the line and say, oh, you're, you know, you're just trying to crap on Postgres here. No. Let's go to Ask Tom, my pride and joy. What is the number one most popular question on Ask Tom? Find the number of rows in each table by a single SQL. How many people have viewed this question? 2.8 million. What are you doing? Don't do it. <laughs> I, I should remove this question from Ask Tom and re or replace the answer with no. We refuse to tell you. It's enormously popular and enormously in demand. And I can't think of a reason why you would ever want to do it. So please just don't.